Coming up, you may have noticed that all is not well in Britain right now, and I have what may be shocking news to some viewers, especially if they only watch the BBC or only read the right-wing press. The government narrative that our woes are actually global problems, and more specifically problems shared with EU countries, is just not true. Stay tuned. If you enjoy these videos, it would be absolutely great if you'd subscribe and help me pass that 10,000 mark just six months after launching this channel. And if you've already subscribed, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Now, the Tory government would like us all to believe that the global pandemic is to blame for everything from empty shelves to rising gas prices to no CO2 to a lack of workers in agriculture, hospitality, social and health care and transport. In many ways, this government got lucky with the pandemic because they're using COVID as a cover story to deflect from the elephant in the room, the issue of Britain's post-Brexit volatility and vulnerability. This is encapsulated in the current petrol and diesel shortages on the nation's forecourts. Two thirds of filling stations have absolutely run dry, with the other third very close to empty. Kwasi Kwarteng said he was aware of some issues with supply chains. So that's good, isn't it, that the business secretary is aware of some issues. As the co-author of Britannia Unchained, he probably blames this on British workers being what he referred to as the worst idlers in the world, and stating that too many people in Britain prefer a lion to hard work. Nothing to do with Brexit, he's sure of that. But the truth is, Britain is short of 100,000 lorry drivers after the exodus of foreign workers following Brexit. And although the government has been effective in highlighting driver shortages on the continent too, the shortages there are not causing anything like the same degree of disruption as in so-called global Britain. Poland, for example, has a bigger driver shortage than Britain, but you wouldn't know it because it's causing next to no disruption there. No empty shelves, no petrol and diesel shortages, because drivers from their EU neighbours are rocking up and filling the gap. Now, as a truth to power viewer, it's possible you may remember the concept of freedom of movement. The new German Chancellor is likely to be Olaf Scholz, who thinks Britain's woes are mainly down not to Brexit as a whole, but specifically the ending of freedom of movement of Labour. Without it, what is the government in Britain doing to shore up that 100,000 lorry driver shortfall? Well, it's actually quite brilliant. They're issuing 5,000 short-term work visas for foreign drivers in the lead up to Christmas, and they're arranging for another 4,000 trainee drivers to be tested at the end of fast-track training by examiners from the armed forces. So there's 9,000 more before Christmas, and who knows, maybe those 4,000 fast-track drivers won't be a danger on the roads and lead to fatalities. And maybe a few of those 5,000 short-term visas will actually be taken up by foreign drivers who won't mind being sent back the minute they're no longer needed and aren't put off by the hostile environment that's been festering in Britain ever since that advisory referendum that polarised the country back in 2016. This is not a global problem. Likewise, the government points to the global rise in wholesale gas prices and pushes the narrative that it's pandemic related. But the truth is that the rise in gas prices has been exponentially more in Britain than on the continent because when we left the EU, we also left the internal energy market, which is taking the sting out of the wholesale gas price rises for EU member states. Let me be clear. If you live in Britain, your gas bills are higher than they would have been had we stayed in the EU. Simple as that. That differential has nothing to do with the pandemic. Britain now has to face energy price volatility and supply chain crises alone in the world. One of Boris Johnson's lies during the Brexit campaign was a very specific promise to voters that voting for Brexit would lead to cheaper household gas bills. Here's a screenshot of an article in the New European newspaper from 2016 confirming this. So here we are, nine months after Brexit, with no petrol or diesel on the forecourts, the biggest gas price increases in Europe, record rises in inflation, the biggest tax burden in 50 years, 
shortages of workers in the supply chain, in agriculture, in hospitality, in social care, in the NHS, and empty shelves in the supermarkets, and with Tory cuts stripping away the £20 universal credit uplift, the triple lock for state pensioners already on one of the lowest pensions in Europe, and hundreds of thousands of employees about to be made redundant as the furlough scheme finishes next week. Maybe some of them would like to retrain to earn minimum wage as drivers or fruit pickers or care workers, you never know. Despite all this, the Tories are still clinging on to a lead in the polls right now. And I think I know why. Despite their incompetence, corruption and contempt for the less well-off in society, the Tories are benefiting from the fact that insecurity and economic pain has always pushed electorates towards the right-wing mindset of look after your own, me and my family first, sod the poor, sod the asylum seekers. And the Tories have been very effective at dog whistle politics that plays to that mindset which has been amplified by the fallout from Brexit. Britain is returning to its pre-EU status as the sick man of Europe, and despite what Brexiters would love to believe, I am profoundly sad about that. The Express, on the other hand, thinks that us rejoiners are gloating about Britain's sharp decline. This is a fairly typical headline from the hard right-wing rag. Now, there's a lot to unpick here because through their choice of the word gloating and the way they talk about the petrol crisis in conjunction with Brexit, it comes pretty close to an admission that one has caused the other. But rather than re-evaluating their unconditional and fanatical support for a Brexit that's coming off the rails and having a serious and profound effect on the lives and well-being of millions of Brits, the Express chooses to focus on accusations of rejoiners gloating. Well done, David Atkins. So glad you've honed in on the real crisis facing the nation, those gloating rejoiners. Your parents must be so proud. Perhaps if we all just believed in Brexit enough, the petrol would start flowing again, which is about as likely as us being offered a trade deal by Joe Biden's America anytime soon. Wasn't that meant to be one of the big benefits of Brexit, that we could sign up to a trade deal with the world's largest economy? Well, back to the Express, we'll let them have the last word. No trade deal with America? So what, they trumpet. Apparently, we're just fine without what was promised to be the biggest Brexit win of all. Just one more unicorn in the sunlit uplands of Brexit mythology. Welcome to the Brexit, sir. I'm sorry. Oh my God.